Hello, everyone, and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock on this Monday as we begin the month of June. It has been a weekend unlike Oregon and Washington have seen. Nothing quite like this before. Protests in Portland, Eugene, and Salem, up into Seattle, people marching in solidarity and demonstrating in anger over the death of George Floyd, who was pinned to the ground by a white police officer in Minneapolis. The protests stretched across this country, from Portland to Pensacola, and globally to London, Berlin, and Vancouver, BC. We also saw moments of humility, an effort to understand and heal, like this one we've been showing from Sunday, when a passerby captured Portland police officers taking a knee with protesters downtown. Here at KGW, in addition to covering what's happening on our streets, we will also work to further a real and candid conversation, as painful as it may be, about our true divisions and the history of injustice, and to move toward understanding and real solutions, and to listen to the voices of everyone, especially the black community who have endured for too long brutality and oppression that have been laid bare by what happened to Floyd, as well as the long history of racism in this country, including in Portland. Thank you for joining in that conversation and on this journey with us. And here's what's happening on this Monday, June 1st. Oregon Governor Kate Brown announced she is activating the National Guard ahead of another night of expected protests. Many demonstrators have peacefully expressed outrage and called for change, but some have been vandalizing and looting businesses. Two dozen governors have now activated the National Guard in their states. KGW's Pat Doris joins us live with more details. And Pat, have you seen any demonstrators so far this afternoon? We did actually, Laurel, about uh, 45 seconds ago, a group of 100 people finished coming through here, chanting and uh, marching up Jefferson Street, where Jefferson and Fourth. You see behind me that uh, there's a large area blocked off around the Justice Center. I'm sure police are trying to get a head start on the activities, keeping the protesters away from the buildings. They're encouraging people to go down to the waterfront. You know, in the 30 years that I've been here, I've never heard of the uh, governor calling out the National Guard for civil unrest, and actually it hasn't happened since. 1984. It's very historic and it shows you kind of where we're at here. Monday morning, after a third night of peaceful protests that turned into a riot in downtown Portland, U.S. Attorney Billy Williams said police are overwhelmed and need help from the Oregon National Guard. I'm asking the governor of Oregon to activate the National Guard. As of noon Monday, 23 other states and the District of Columbia had all responded to similar calls and activated Guard members to help with civil unrest. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler said he asked for the Guard on Sunday and was told no. I spoke to the governor three or four times yesterday. I did make the request on all three of those occasions for uh, support from the National Guard. The governor uh, had alternative strategies that she suggested. Today, he joined the U.S. Attorney calling on Governor Kate Brown to activate the Guard. The soldiers would be those specially trained in security and they would not carry firearms, but they would help protect buildings like the Justice Center. I want to assure folks that if the National Guard is deployed in Portland, they will be deployed for the purpose of securing and protecting facilities. That in turn would free up our local law enforcement who is trained in crowd management to be deployed throughout the community. The comments came after another night of violence in Portland. Sunday night, thousands marched peacefully from southeast Portland and met up with other protesters at the Justice Center in downtown. Despite an 8 p.m. curfew, police did not confront the crowd until it turned violent around 11.30 p.m. <laughs> Protesters began throwing projectiles at police officers, and this escalated to the point where our officers had large industrial-grade mortar-type fireworks fired at them and a very large number of projectiles. He said that is when police began to break up the demonstration. He also took a respectful tone toward the peaceful demonstrators, saying he and the Bureau understood the frustration of those who want to make a point about injustice. And we acknowledge the pain in our communities of color that we have to just recognize that our profession over its history has a role in. We've worked very hard in this city and in our organization to change that and we will continue to do so. Sheriff Mike Reese also said he understood the frustration. He watched near the focus of the violence at the Justice Center last night. 
It was incredibly violent last night in front of the Justice Center at times. And he asked the public to turn in the criminals. If you know someone that was responsible, I'm asking you to please come forward and let us know who that person is so that we can seek justice and stop this violence. Finally, the U.S. attorney suggested the violence that continues to break out near the end of the protests, Friday night, Saturday night, and again Sunday night in Portland, is not random, but coordinated nationwide. It has elevated to an, uh, an organized level across the United States uh, from what we are all gathering in terms of the information. Um, it, it, it's just different. Um, it's like a light switch going off at some point and, and similar conduct is going on throughout the United States. We also have reaction from a couple of black community leaders. Joanne Hardesty, Portland City Commissioner, said at first she was against bringing in the National Guard, but once she heard how um, worn out Portland police and the other agencies that are helping out, how worn out they're getting, and the role that the National Guard would actually play, that she was okay with that, that they will play behind the scenes. But then I also talked with the Reverend uh, Leroy Haynes, who told me that he thinks it is a mistake to bring them in, because while they may be able to quell some of the violence in the short term, the frustration and anger he believes will build in the long term. So we'll see. Back to you. Pat Doris live downtown. Thank you, Pat. Just a few minutes ago, Portland police announced street closures downtown that have already gone into effect. It's the streets right around the Justice Center and the courthouse, southwest 1st to 5th, from southwest Taylor to Jefferson. Police are blocking all cars and pedestrians because of safety concerns and criminal activity. The city of Portland is also, as we mentioned, under another 8 p.m. curfew tonight until 6 in the morning. A longtime member of the Vancouver Public Schools Board of Directors resigned today after suggesting on social media that fire hoses should be used against protesters. Mark Stoker apologized after criticism from community members and colleagues and his tweet has been deleted. In the 1960s, police used fire hoses against civil rights marchers. Stoker has been on the board since 2007. The board will appoint a replacement to finish Stoker's term, which ends in December of 2021. According to Mayor Ted Wheeler, people outside of Portland were coming to the city to cause trouble. He was so concerned he closed the exits and the on ramps into the city last night. But was that really happening based on who was arrested? KGW investigative reporter Kristen Severance has been looking into arrest reports all day and she joins us now with a breakdown. Yeah, Laurel, so we've been checking public records, court records all day to see who was arrested at the demonstrations and where they lived. We wanted to see at least based on those arrests, if the majority of them or any of them came from out of state or out of the area as we keep hearing. According to Portland Police, 75 people were arrested at the demonstrations since Friday. Now, more than half of those arrests were not yet entered in the court system, so those records were not available. For the records that were available, 25 Five listed addresses in Portland, Beaverton or Vancouver. Six were listed as transit or homeless. And just two of those arrests were actually out of town. 31 year old Clayton Eisman of Richmond, California. He was the only out of state arrest. He was arrested for interfering with a peace officer and disorderly conduct. And then 32 year old William Isham of Roseburg, Oregon. So same state, but out of the area. He was arrested for those same things. And while we do keep hearing some city officials, you know, saying it's really out of towners causing issues, Deputy Chief Chris Davis said today it's just too soon to tell. It's a little too early to tell. You know, we have made a large number of arrests, but that number of arrests is a small fraction of the people who've been involved in criminal activity. And, you know, the one of the realities of living in a large metro area is that people come and go from cities where they don't live all the time. So it's much too early in the investigation to tell the distribution of where people are from who are who are engaged in criminal activity. And, you know, we'll continue to check on these records as they become available to get a better idea of where these people live and if any are coming from outside of the area. Laurel. Thank you, Kristen.